on my heart to share what I've learned over the years studying in Revelation. And it may not be exactly what you've heard before. Amen. But it's what God gave me, and it's what I'm going to share with you. I've read the commentaries. I've read all. I've read for years on Revelation because it fascinated me. And every bit of this, I didn't get it from the commentaries. It's just what God gave me, and that's what I'm going to share. Amen. Um, it is a study on the book of Revelation. Um, the book of Revelation was given to us by Christ through the Apostle John. The purpose was to show his servants, the church, his people, what's to come and to prepare them for it. Uh, he sent an angel to John, which was probably Jesus, it, uh, because later on you do see Jesus. Uh, and it was given to John the Apostle, who lists himself as a servant of Christ. He doesn't list himself as anybody important. It says, to John the Apostle, a servant of Christ. Um, it verifies that what, what we receive is real, and it's from the Word of God, through the testimony of Jesus. Um, starting with, a little bit this was already covered, but Revelation 1, uh, 1, 2, 3, it says, The revelations from Jesus Christ, which God gave him, to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything that he saw, that the word of God, that this is the word of God and the blessed testimony of Jesus Christ. And it goes on to say, blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, prophecy and blessed are those who hear it and take it to heart what is written in it because the time is near. Um, I went over the fact that it came from Jesus and through John, and I've heard for years that you are just blessed to read it. But well, what a piece of stuff. <laughs> you can read it till the world ends if you don't take it to heart. Amen. It says, blessed are those who read it aloud for them, some people learn by hearing their own words, and other people are hearing those words. So those people are blessed that they're sharing that. But it's blessed are those who take it to heart. For what is written, because the time is near. The time is near. This is a, this is a prophecy uh, of what is to come. And that was written over 2,000 years ago, and the time is near. But with God, time is not how we see time. Right. And the time, what we see right now in the United States and around the world makes you think that from the different prophecies in the Bible that the time is truly near. And it's wise to read this, to pay attention to it, and Amen. get your life uh, in, in order. Um, we're blessed because we, this tells us what's coming. It tells us what to do. Um, we are not just, as I said, just blessed because we read it or because we heard it. And, and, and like I was saying, it's not magic. It, it's not going to do anything if you don't take it to heart. I, I get tickled that, that there's this fella and he's got a, a cross that half, covers half his chest. He's got a rabbit's foot on his keychain, a four-leaf clover in his wallet, and he knocks on wood. So, you know, he's covering the bases. One of them's going to take care of him. And, and this is not anything magical, anything that's going to, but it, what it does is it should speak to your heart and bring about a change in you. This, this thing, the book of Revelation covers the gospel. Yeah. It doesn't, you know, it covers the gospel. It speaks to the churches. It speaks to the individuals in the churches, because we have a really diverse variety of people in the different churches, and the churches are diverse. Um, verses 4 through 6, this is John, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is, and who was, and is to come, 
and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, has made us to be a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. This is written to the seven churches of Asia, but those churches typify all the diversity in the churches today. And some churches have got a little, of, a lot of them in them. Mm -hmm. So, but it's so it's to us. Uh, it's from John, and it's from the Trinity of God. It's from the, the God the Father, God the Son. And God the Holy Spirit. It Amen. magnifies Jesus. It lifts up Jesus. The Father magnifies Jesus. It and it mentions Jesus as the faithful witness, and then his resurrection, the firstborn of the dead. Nobody, absolutely nobody, was resurrected before Jesus died, was buried, and, and uh, went down into Sheol, uh, which at that time was the place where. The people went, there was the, the you've been bad side and the you've been good side. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting they could see each other. It's like, but they couldn't cross that, that divide. Mm -hmm. But until he went down there, ministered to those people, and then was resurrected, there was no resurrection. You know, he, he had paid for our salvation on the cross, but there was no resurrection until... He was resurrected because he is. He says when he's talking to Mary, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. And there is no resurrection without exactly. Jesus Christ. Amen. There is no or no resurrection to life. There is a going the other way. Uh, Jesus was the firstborn of the dead. It says he's the ruler of the kings of the earth. He has every bit of authority here on this earth, and nothing, nothing's going to happen without his authority. He is in authority over this earth. God is the Father is in authority over Jesus, but Jesus has been, this is his. Yes. And, and this, the, we are his. He paid the price for us, and we're his. So he has the authority over everything here. Um, a lot of, it, the text talks about a lot of things have to happen. A lot of things have to happen. And a lot, right now, a lot of things are happening. Some of them aren't what we want to see. We see morals that have deteriorated. We see disrespect. We see meanness. Just, and none of these things are new. None of them that, you know, John the Apostle thought they were coming soon in his, in his lifetime. I, I tell people that there's an account of Christopher Columbus saying that Queen Victoria <coughs> felt that the time was near then. So, and we feel that the time is near now. But it doesn't matter whether it's right now or a thousand years from now. We have to be prepared and and because we could be called home any minute. Amen. Pastor's daughter is a prime example of that. You know, we don't know the hour, the day, the moment that God's coming for us. And we are to be prepared. And Revelation really, if you get over the, the spooky things that people, it's not spooky, but people make it spooky. Things that people get into, well, this is going to happen. And it's like, it's... It's just really simple. Be prepared. Know what the word says and live right. It's it's not it's not complicated. Um, Jesus is God is He's just He's merciful, and all these things that have happened. When we were studying Abraham, he said, you know, I'm giving you this land, but everything has not happened that has to happen before I can give it to you. So there are things that have to happen, and as we look at what's happening here, it looks like they're happening, but we, we can't say. Uh, but God is merciful. 
he, he, he's just, his purpose, I truly believe, in all that he does is to defeat evil. God is the epitome of perfect goodness, and then there is evil, and I think God's purpose is to defeat evil and to have goodness reign. I, I truly do, and that's just out of me. There's, I, you can't find it in the world. Uh, that's Barbara, um, so I'll tell you in a minute. But God has, he has rules, he made the rules, but he has to live by those rules. He's, he is God, he has every bit of power, and he's got every bit of authority, but he cannot and he will not change the rules. He's not going to just throw up his hands and say, I'm tired of you. I'm just tired of you. He thought about that a few times in the Old Testament. <laughs> but it, he says, I'm just going to destroy you all. I, I'm just done with it. I, you know I'm done. There, He has set rules in place to how things should be, must be, and God follows the rules. He's, he's not going to give that. When, when that final time comes, the devil's not going to be able to come up to him and sniffle and say, well, you didn't play fair. He's like, oh, you didn't do right. And God's going to say, yes, I did. These are the rules. This is what I did. This is how it was accomplished. And you lose. Amen. He loses. Um, God, he, 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 does, he, won't, he won't allow any kind of fault on his side. Uh, verse three says, "To him who lo or, says to him who loves us and freed us from sin by his blood." Uh, God in this God the Father gives glory to Christ, and, and when God gives glory to Christ, the Father who is well, God, can we? Why can't we? People don't they don't recognize Christ, and and, and even Christians. They kind of, a lot of Christians are halfway about Christ. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and like I said, it's, it's a good luck charm or whatever, and, you know, they kind of believe their faith, but they, they're not wholeheartedly sold out to Christ. When God the Father glorifies Jesus, we should take that example in, and we should also glorify Jesus. Um, Jesus loves absolutely every one of us absolutely he provided a way uh, through his sacrifice and we we shouldn't people we hear it all the time well you know he bled died and rose again all of a sudden it's just like doo, 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 doo. that's not it was not a little thing but Jesus right, right. died for us yeah, right. Right. It, it's when we get casual about Jesus's death and resurrection we need to think again because Jesus was he was just as human as you and I he had seen the father so he knew the other side but he was just as human as you and I and in the garden it says when he was praying sweat fell like big drops of blood I've been, have, I've been sweating out in this humidity and it does it'll just rip off of you uh, but he was so earnest in prayer and that the sweat was just pouring off of him and he said he said I don't want to do this he said if if this cup can pass from me mm -hmm. but then he said not my will but your will mm -hmm. Jesus did not he knew what was coming mm -hmm. because he had you know divine knowledge he knew he knew what he was going to suffer and he didn't want to do it. His human person, God showed me that a couple years ago, and I went, oh. But it's, he didn't want to do it. But he did it because he, it was his job, the Father told him to, and it's not his will, not Jesus' will, but the will of the Father. And Jesus did it for us. We can't, we can't take our salvation casually because right. it is by the divine grace of God by the obedience of Jesus he didn't have to be obedient but he was he didn't have to do it but he did he did it and he did it for us and he did it because he loves us um, 
he, he, you know, he chose, and, and people say, well, he was God. He, you know, he didn't have to sin. He was fully human. He saw sin. He was tempted by sin, but he knew God, and he, because he knew the Father, and he, I think because he knew the other side, he could see, and he led a sinless life. And through Jesus, Jesus has, I don't know where it's at in here, but he has the, the keys of uh, death, hell, and the grave. He, ha he has the keys, and it's only through Jesus that we're going to get to heaven. Right. It's only through Jesus. Uh, you know, he didn't, he didn't sin, and he made a way for us not to have to sin. His blood cleans us from sin. He sent us the Holy Spirit to lead us and direct us and point us. God puts up roadblocks for me. I mean, sometimes I hit them like, just like a cement barrier, head on. <laughs> and sometimes I back up and try it again, you know, before I realize what, you know, God's saying, don't go that way. Don't go that way. Amen. So don't do it. You don't, there is not one saved person that has to sin. Sure. Your sin is a choice. choice. It is absolutely a choice. Yes. And Jesus made a way through his blood that we could be saved. He gave us a helper through the Holy Spirit to help us not to sin. Amen. He helped us not to sin. Um, it goes on and it says, Look, he is coming in the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the peoples of the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. Look, he's coming in the clouds. This, the, the left behind stuff and all the stuff that we had a few years ago, uh, pretty many years ago. Mm -hmm. and, and people are saying, well, they're not going to know where you went. It says, and every, every eye will see him. So he's going to be seen by the entire world. They're not going to say, well, where did everybody go? They're going to say, it, it says, and it says, and they will mourn because of him. They're going to know where everybody went. Mm -hmm. They're, people know the gospel. They don't know, maybe don't know all the fine, but... They know the vague, the generalities, and they know all this stuff. And when Christ comes back, and the graves open up, and the dead come out of the sea, and, and wherever else they may be, they're going to see it, and they're going to know, and they are going to be grieved. The, the Christians that don't make it will probably be grieved the most, but the other people knowing that bad things are coming are going to be grieved because yeah. they're going to know. We've got um, somewhere in here. It says, "Oh, it says that our gospel's been preached all over the world, and most people know it. But there are Christians. I have my I have a typo in there. In name only, and I say there's a lot of Christians that are Christians in name only. Um, my mama was a Methodist." <laughs> And Mama was a Methodist because her Mama was a Methodist, and her grandpa, Grandmama was a Methodist. Right. Mama was not a Methodist. And there's a lot of people that are Christians because Mama was a Christian. Mm -hmm. And they've never darkened the door of the church. They, they probably never picked up the word. They're just simply Christians in name Amen. only. They, Amen. they don't know. They don't know him. Um, it, it goes on in verse 7, uh, verse 8, God speaks, and he identifies himself. He is infinite. He's the beginning and the ending. He's almighty. He's all-powerful. He is in control of all things. This is, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, who is and was and is to come. The Almighty. The Almighty. Almighty. Nothing yes. more so, nothing. Um, I wrote down, 
it's he, like he's great at, you know, we, we think, get terrified of the tur tornadoes and the hurricanes mm -hmm. and, and the earthquakes and the tsunamis, but he, his power is greater than, than all the atomic weapons that we have in the world. If they mm -hmm. explode at all at the same time, the power of God is greater than that. Yes. And we need to know that. We need to know that God has absolutely all power. And, and I put an aside in here because I, I, I think it's important. It, and it's in Proverbs, and it says, The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Yes. And that's another one I've heard preached. Well, God doesn't want you to fear him. God, you know, you just respect him. You know, you, you, he, he, God's not a God of fear. I beg to differ <laughs> with you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I beg to differ with you. A moment. You, it, it's, it's, not, it's not just respect. It's not just, yeah, you're supposed to respect God. You're supposed to admire him. You're supposed to reverence him. But the word says the, we should be, try not to get in, we should fear an angry God. Because he's got all the power, to, all the authority, and we should humble ourselves before God. Amen. We are a proud, just like the Israelites, they were proud and stiff-necked people. And so are we, but we need to humble ourselves before God. God is God, and there is nothing. And just because... He's loving, he's patient, he's merciful. Uh, and because Jesus and, and his works, we haven't experienced the wrath of God that the Old Testament got on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. this, is, this, is the, this is the time of the dispensation of Christ and the Holy Spirit. And, and God is patient with us, but we should not ever think that he is not able to do anything and everything that he says because he can. He can. He absolutely can. Yes, um, you know, Jesus is right now, Jesus is our refuge. He's our safe place. You know, he protects us. He's our strong tower. But it's time for us to be awake, to know what sin is, and to live according to the word of God. Because we, as the body of Christ, because this was written to the body of Christ, it wasn't written to the other folks, uh, have to live righteous lives. And sin is never acceptable. Never, 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 never. And the churches say, well, yeah, everybody sins. Uh, yeah, everybody sins. And, and yeah, you go down front and you say your little thing to the preacher and you're saved forever. It's not there. No. It's not in the Word anywhere. No. It, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. It does not mean that your salvation is by works, but you should have fear and trembling and do your best to do what the Word of God calls you to do. Amen. It's so important. Um, it goes on. It says, I, John, your brother and companion in suffering, and the kingdom and patient endurance that our Lord that are our are in our Lord Jesus Christ is on the Isle of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. On the Lord's day I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet which said write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamon, Thyatira, I never say this right, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. So he's saying, I'm, I'm giving you this vision, I'm showing you what's to come, and you need to tell the churches. Mm -hmm. And he lists the churches. And even though those churches are not physically there, the likeness of those churches continue. Uh, John's vision, he, he talks about his vision, he, where he was. He's on the Isle of Patmos, and he's on there because he was preaching and sharing the gospel. He, he's, he's, he's in hard labor. He's, he says he's our brother in Christ 
and in suffering. So he knows he had to suffer. And Christ said, you know, if you're in me, you're going to suffer because they persecuted me, they'll persecute you. Um, and I find that if we do not have trials, we are weak and we can't stand. When, when real trouble comes, if you haven't had some before that to build you up, you cannot stand. Amen. If, if the, the little plant's left in the greenhouse and it never gets any wind on it, when the wind comes, it just falls over. It can't stand. And we have to have, we have to be strengthened. And God strengthens us through the, the trials that we go through. And, and they're never, ever, ever there to harm us, no matter what they feel like. God never, ever, ever allows, and he allows these things for our good. He doesn't send them, but he allows them for our good. And it's to build us up. So he's, he's, he says his suffering uh, is no better, no greater. And he suffered a lot. I, I remember who told me. He says they tried to boil him in oil, he wouldn't cook. Uh, <laughs> so he, he, you know, it's like God, God has saved, saved him for a long time. And he was an old, old man. And he's on the Isle of Patmos, whether he's breaking up rocks or I don't know if they were mining or what they were doing, but it was hard, hard labor, and he's an old man, but he, it's, he's, this is the Sabbath, not the Sabbath, the Sabbath is Saturday, it's the Lord's Day, which we, which is called Sunday, but I like it a lot when they say the Lord's Day, because it is the Lord's Day, it's the day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and I like that, I like that title. Uh, this is on the Lord's day. I was in the spirit, and I heard behind me. He didn't see it. He heard a loud voice like a trumpet, and it spoke to him and told him what it was supposed to do. He was praying. He was in the spirit, and if you are really deep into prayer, the world could come to an end around you, and you would not know it. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and so John is deep, deep, deep into prayer and in the spirit, and he hears this very loud sound, which is the voice of God. Uh, he says it's so loud like a trumpet, so obviously it probably doesn't go, it probably is just a very loud, penetrating voice. And he understands what it says, so it's not like thunder. It's loud, a voice, it's very, very loud voice that he understands. Um, we don't know anybody else on the island that heard anything. We don't know if it was just John in the spirit lifted up into the heavens or if it was, so we don't know. But we do know that he heard that voice and it told him what to do. It was clear, it was understandable, and it told him to write it down so it could give it to the churches in Asia Minor. And, and he goes through and he does, he mentions each church, and next week, I got most of it done. Next week, I've got one church left uh, of the chapter two. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about the different churches and, 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 and what Jesus said to those churches. But, and, and he's saying that to the churches today. Amen. Um, the book of, Re as I said earlier, the book of Revelation is not for the general public, it's for the church. It's a warning, it's an instruction. And it's encouragement. You know, Christ always encouraged. I, I, I'm reading this next thing when he said to the churches, and you know this one wasn't too good and that one wasn't too good, but he always said he gave them a word of encouragement and, and lifted them up and said, if you do, then. There's never, there's never condemnation. There's always encouragement. He points out and then he said he gives direction. Mm -hmm. So he he is so kind, and he always offers encouragement. Um, the this book is so 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 important. The word the book of Revelation, and and as you said, I've read it off and on for years, uh, but. The first time you read it, and if you read it in King James, you've just read Greek. Uh, and 
you might as well find a version that you can read and understand. And I did good in the New Testament in uh, the NIV, but when I got to the Old Testament in the NIV, I couldn't figure it out. And I, that would have been, whew, I'm going to go. Uh, my son was young, <laughs> and he's 48 yesterday, <laughs> day before yesterday. Uh, but I read his children's living Bible, and it brought clarity in me to what it was saying. And from reading the living Bible, his, his children's Bible, I was able to go to my Bible, and I've been able to go to different versions later and understand what they're saying. But so, you've got to get the gist of what it's about, and then you can deal with a little bit more complicated version. But you have to read something you can understand, because if you can't understand it, there's no point in reading it. You, it doesn't. It doesn't do you any good. You can, Amen. you know, go play a whole a golf, go go fishing, go whatever it makes you happy. But it doesn't do you any good to read it if you don't get anything out of it. Um, and that's me. Uh, it goes on. It says, and I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and among the lampstands was someone like the Son of Man, dressed in a robe reaching down to his feet with a golden sash across his head and hair that was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held the seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was the two it oh, was, was a sharp double two-edged sword. His face was like the sun, shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And then he placed his right hand on on me and said, "Do not be afraid." I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and now look, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. This is Christ. This is, this is the Christ that the Israelites were expecting to see in the Messiah. This is, this is the Messiah coming back for his people. But he is, uh, he is his majesty, but yet he still has, because Christ left heaven, came down as a human being. He has human form. He looks like you and me. Um, he's got a long white robe, which means purity and holiness and righteousness. He's got a golden sash across his chest, uh, which is a sign of his royalty and his majesty and his authority. His hair is white like wool, which can mean either purity or the fact that he is not young. He is forever and ever and has always been, and it is, he is not, he's not a child. He, he, is, he is an adult and he's an old person even though he is still God. Uh, so it could, it, the white refers to purity, also refers to age and wisdom. Um, eyes like fire. You know, his eyes are like fire. He can, you know, you got people that can look right through you. These are eyes of fire, and these have got to be penetrating eyes that can see right through you, that can know, and that would kind of scare me to look at to, I mean, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like those, those, that's power. Yeah. He is, this is a powerful man that we're seeing. Uh, let's see here. It says his feet are glowing and shining and brilliant like polished bronze. And bronze is really, really strong. They're beautiful. And, and I 
remembered, it wasn't in my first notes, the, the word, and I don't have the, the exact thing, it says, how beautiful are the feet of him who brings the good news. Mm -hmm. He is standing in power and authority and beauty. He is magnificent. He is beautiful to look at. And all the authority in heaven is in his hands. Yes, Lord. He is God in in humanity, but God in in his he is fully God. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not it, it's oh okay, his voice. God is loud and strong. He's no longer Jesus, I don't think rarely ever other than in the temple when he got mad and, and ran up money changers raised his voice. But this is God with a loud, strong voice, a voice of authority, a voice of power, and a voice that everybody's going to hear. Everybody. You're going to hear him. His mouth has a two-edged sword, which is always the word of God, and the word of God defeats evil. I get so excited when you're reading later in the book, and it says that he is coming back on a white horse with a two-edged sword, and he defeats Satan with the word of his mouth, which is the two-edged sword. So, you know, the power of the word of God defeats Satan. Yes, Lord. Um, his face is as bright as the sun. You, 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 can't, you can't look, I mean, you cannot look directly at the sun even sometimes on a not so bright day, it is more than your, you can't do it. It right. will blind you. And, and this, this is God now. This is Jesus. He, you know, he was the humble servant. He was a suffering servant. He, you know, he was a man of sorrows. But this is not that person. This is the Messiah. He's in the likeness of the Father. And his majesty is more than you can look at. The word says, you can't look on God and live, and and Jesus is God, and He has the majesty of God. John John couldn't stand; he fell down. He saw God. He saw Jesus, and every bit of strength came out of him, and he said he fell down as dead. And I know, uh, just nowadays, under the Spirit of God. You sometimes you can't get you can't get up. That's right. You cannot stand up. Amen. Uh, and and to to be in the presence of God Himself. And and that's a good way to be knocked down. I have to tell you. Amen. Uh, <laughs> Amen. But you know he fell down as dead. It says yet. Yeah. But Jesus, Jesus, even as the ruler, as the highest <clears throat> authority on the earth, is still kind. And he reached his right hand down to Jesus, or to John, and he touched him, and he comforted him, and he reassured him, and he says, don't be afraid. The right hand of God is the right hand of power and authority, and Jesus reaches down with it. In his left hand, it was his right, right. hand, mm -hmm. and he comforts him, and he, he says, don't be afraid. This is the king of glory. And he talks to John so that John can understand him because I'm the first and the last. He's been here before every, anything was, and he will be here after everything is gone. Amen. He was dead, but he's alive and will never be dead again. And he's got the keys to hell and death, and there is nobody that can take those out of his hands. I can't find the last page.
Without him, we have eternal. We have judgment, and we have eternal punishment in hell. You can live the best human life imaginable. You can do all the right things and still go to hell without Jesus. Yeah. There is no way to heaven without Jesus. Yeah. Uh, and because he lived righteous, because he followed the rules, he did it the way the Father said, he has the authority and he has the right to tell to send us. We he never the funny thing is Jesus never sends anybody because we make a choice. Yeah. If Jesus. anybody there's not anybody gonna be able to stand up come the day of judgment and, and, and complain that Jesus sent them to hell because they sent themselves there. Right. They will not have a foot to stand on. Jesus never condemned anyone, but we condemn ourselves, and he does have the authority to send them there, and and there will be, it's as broad as the way to destruction, and many there that enter in, and narrow is the gate to life, and do you find it, and that's just a barbarized way of saying that, but <laughs> I, 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 I know all, so many scriptures, and if you ask me where it was, I couldn't tell you. I have to go look for it. But and so, and then he goes on and he says, "Right, therefore, what you've seen, what is now, and what will take place." And he says, "The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands, are the seven churches." So he holds them in high esteem. They are golden. He's holding them in his right hand, so he's protecting them, and he wants the best for the churches. So this is this word is for the churches. It's for us. It's for today. It's a word of instruction and a word of encouragement. Amen.